Right. Well, it's delightful to have someone else from outside the Linux monoculture that I've been hearing all about. (laughs) (laughs) I'm not sure. Has the word Linux even been mentioned here prior to these denials? I don't know. Anyway, over to you, Femi. Hi, guys. Is it too loud? (laughs) Hello. um, My name is Femi. I'm going to talk about free BSD jails today. Um, uh, just to introduce myself, my daytime job doesn't involve anything related to IT, databases, programming, or anything. I'm, uh, I work as a um, network engineer, but let's say radio network, like mobile phones and signals and um, bars and, you know, ugh, it doesn't work kind of thing. Um, so, the, the, but I've been um, using operating uh, open source operating systems pretty much around 20 years now. Um, I started with Reddit, Linux, I think six or 6.1. Um, so it's it wasn't Reddit Enterprise Linux; it was free back then. Um, so I'm going to talk about FreeBSD jails today. Um, it's a um, it's something that I use. Um, on my laptop or um, on my cloud um, system. So I thought it would be um, nice to give you a taste of it and let other people know there are other operating systems that you can use, um, which are delightful. And um, they they have some... Is is there anybody um, using FreeBSD here? I know Thomas. Nobody. Come on. But you heard about it, right? Oh, that, that's good. Um, j- just to give a um, little bit of background about FreeBSD, it's, it's um, people sometimes say BSD and put FreeBSD, OpenBSD, and NetBSD in the same bucket. They are not the same. They are separate operating systems, although they come from the same source uh, base, uh, but their development is sort of um, going not in the same direction. Um, th- th- there's lots of um, common um, code base though between these um, operating systems. Um, oops, jails. Um, so the the motivation uh, and who who thought about this concept? I meant to cut this part out, just ignore it because it's a few slides later. Um, the the unique security model you have a user root does everything and um, you rely on that person and if what if um, that account is compromised so imagine you have a web server or you're providing sort of a FTP service or anything you most probably would like to keep your own resources say file system you know processing resource memory or whatever separate from your customer's um, sort of, you know, account. Um, so this is possible, and um, but 20 years ago, 25 or 15 years ago, um, that, that was a challenge. The traditional Unix security model gives you um, ways to implement it, but the more fine-grained security you want, the more messy it gets, like, it gets um, very hard to administer the system. Then you end up with lots of rules, maybe different groups or user groups, different user profiles. It gets messy. Um, so if you want to get a proper isolation, you most probably would like to um, do file system um, isolation. You like to isolate processes and um, you also need to look at your network stack. Uh, for file system, you might um, have thought about Shroot, which um, actually is a, a sort of um, system call on Unix systems, which um, sets the, um, the root directory of calling process to a specific location. Um, it's not designed to be a security tool. And I got this, um, this is a 
screenshot, by the way. I got this from one of the references and, um, and at the end of the slide. So the, uh, this utility was first uh, developed by Bill Joy in um, early, I think, 80s. Yes. And it's meant to provide sort of a um, separate development environment than being a um, security measure. But it's, um, it has been used, or still is being used, I think, um, sort of um, a security, sort of on FTP service, for example. Um, when you Google um, escape truth, you would get hundreds of, maybe thousands of uh, results, right? So if, if you like to provide sort of a, uh, going, going back to the um, beginning of the presentation, if you are running a um, web server or an FTP server or something, you most probably would like to separate your own resources or your own system from uh, that of offered to your customers. And um, separating your file system with truth isn't an option yet. Yeah. Um, so the solution, um, so today there are different solutions, virtualization, you can um, check an IBMware sort of environment or you, you got other stuff like Docker and um, other things. Um, the solution of FreeBSD is called Jails. Um, so it is called operating system level virtualization. Um, so I got this um, nice picture from uh, one of the um, documents that I um, put at the end of the slide pack. Um, so I think pretty much everybody here is familiar with Docker, right? Given that it's all Linux folks. Um, so we got Solaris zones um, and FreeBSD jails. And FreeBSD jails actually are quite um, mature, I would say. It's uh, around, it was introduced in around 2000, um, in March 2000, and uh, it's, it has been around like 18 years now. Uh, the difference between um, the traditional virtualization solutions um, and a operating system level virtualization solution is that there is no virtual machine that you run your applications or services on. It's, um, it uses some resources um, of the host machine like the kernel or sometimes the dri uh, device drivers. Uh, However, you get a separate user land network stack and, um, and a file system. The advantage is it's really lightweight. You can like run hundreds of jails on a system without really creating a big mess. So I got um, these stats, which um, I don't know when that um, this is from a paper, um, uh, I, yeah, the reference number six. This is from a paper, and it clearly shows that um, a jail or an operating system level virtualization solution adds really slim to none overhead to your real load on the operating system. Whereas a, a traditional or, you know, the, um, the known, I would say, the, the VMware kind of virtualization solution would um, give you a linear sort of workload or um, load on, on the system as you add up um, putting, putting things on. Um, okay. Oops. Um, do you have any questions up to this point? Okay, let's uh, have a look at the jail system in more detail. So th this is a traditional FreeBSD file hierarchy. Um, it's not exactly like this. We've got more stuff, but uh, this is just to demonstrate. Given that you have three jails uh, running on this system, all these jails will have their own sort of root directory, 
like an FTP truth environment. Um, they will have their own IP addresses that they can bind their services to. And network stack, of course. And they'll have their own IPC, System 5 IPC environment for the processes to communicate between each other. Any process in this jail cannot communicate with any process in this one and vice versa. So it's pretty isolated. Um, I'll do some uh, sort of demo and show you how it works. Uh, but this is um, how it looks like if you um, roughly would like to demonstrate the concept. Um, is this clear enough to give you an idea about how it is? Both of, um, so we are looking at three systems here, the host system and there are two jails. All of them use the same operating system kernel. Uh, there's one kernel only and they share the same device drivers but the access to device drivers and um, some resources in a jail is limited. Oops. Yeah, as I mentioned, you got limitations in a jail. Um, this is a prison in Norway, so it's not like this. In FreeBSD, you got limitations. Um, as I mentioned, the uh, System 5 IPC is limited. You can't send signals to a process outside of the jail. You can't access um, any resources uh, in the file system outside of your own root um, directory. Or you can't bind to an IP address which is not assigned to your jail. So this pretty much uh, seals the process or the environment in a sandbox. And it's really lightweight. Uh, the, the overhead is like um, maybe a few hundred megabytes of, not even that, um, of files like configuration files and the, the software you install into jail and that's it. It uses your own uh, operating system kernel uh, you can set the limits, uh, how much memory uh, or how, how, uh, the CPU cycles and other stuff. So you, you can fine grain all these things that I'll mention in, uh, later in the slide. So um, FreeBSD uses um, Truth, but um, it has gone through a fortification phase and uh, the code has ordered it and made um, more robust, or so we believe. Um, many system calls, um, especially dealing with system resources, um, have been modified and um, they are now jail aware. So if anything wants to send a, a process wants to communicate with another process, um, there is a call called prison check and it checks the um, credentials of um, the initiating process and compares it against the, um, the other process. And if they are not in the same jail, um, your call would fail. Um, again, uh, goes for the network stack and the code was made um, jail aware so that a process can only bind to an IP address assigned to its jail if the process is running in a jail. The initial implementation of jails, um, I think, added 200 lines of code, which is not that much, and it was across 50 files, which makes around four lines per file, and you kind of wonder, had this guy made any sort of, you know, error control or anything? So, but apparently, it works in from 2000 till today, it has gone a long, um, long way. Um, okay, so there is two concepts. The, um, th there is the user land um, p part of jails and the kernel part of jails. The uh, 
By the way, I always uh, include this eight and two inside the brackets. Do you know what this means? Thomas probably would. Yeah, so in FreeBS it's different than Linux, I think. Uh, two is system calls, eight is uh, user land application. So, so you, you got a um, jail call uh, in user land in, in kernel space. Uh, this one calls this one. And um, while attaching a jail, you use this command. Uh, this is a um, call, and th there's a command. You use this command, which in turn uses this system call. And th th this is sort of the procedure. Of course, there's m there was more between these calls. I just stripped that off uh, for the um, sake of brevity. Um, the idea is jail exec or g exec this call um, executes a or calls a process like um, a shell it then this call puts itself into a jail and calls where is it this system call which then executes your command, say it's a shell. Since the calling process is jailed, all the subsequent processes are also jailed. And this is the way you isolate the whole process three into one container. So I mentioned there are ways to fine tune um, the security and the resource usage of sales. Uh, I actually forgot to mention uh, many stuff. Now I remember it. Um, so talking about limitations of agile, um, so the, the network stack is jail aware. So you can't actually create a raw socket, which means that you can't ping from within a jail to another machine because you need to create an ICMP packet, um, and you can't do it because it's not allowed. Um, however, you can change this with my mouse control by setting this system variable to one, but then that would um, violate the security sort of concept of jails. Uh, there's really not many. Uh, things that you can play with in terms of system-wide variables, but uh, there is this resource. Uh, there is. Yeah. And you can pretty much set many things like CPU time, data size, memory usage. What else do we have? Um, CPU percentage and read write bits and lots of things. So you can really um, fine tune the resource usage of your jails if you are running in a professional environment or a production environment. Sorry, a production environment. Um, I use it for um, my personal sort of purpose, um, so it's not secure, <laughs> but um, I'll just, yeah, okay, I'll just do some demos. Can anybody see the terminal screen? Okay, it's going to be hard to type on. Can you hear me? I know. Useful for once. Thank you. Okay, I'm gonna. Um, so I actually have a jail running right now on my laptop. Um, I think it's this one. I'll just name these tabs to host. OK. 
Okay, so this is the whole system now I'm uh, looking at. So if you look at what processes are running, there's quite a lot of processes are running. Okay, um, this command shows that I have one jail running at the moment. I'll oh, just write me. <sighs> yeah. Um, Easy jail admin is a huge um, shell script. Very big, like messy. And it's still being updated, uh, which is good, which makes life easier in order to, um, if you have a few jails running in your system, like, 10 or 20, updating them would be a big task. With this, it's easy. So I'm going to um, get into the jail. I'm inside the jail. So um, looking at the processes running, it's just a few processes. Um, I have Java running because I am. Uh, show you uh, why am I using this JS4 so this is my jail running on my system so it's like a um, source code course um, cross-reference um, which is very nice this this could be a um, lightning talk the open rock I like it um, so th this is the first jail, and we are inside of it. So um, it has no visibility to outside of the jail. I'll create one more jail, just on the spot. Does it have any init process inside the jail? Um, no, it just fires up. You 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 have uh, RC scripts and um, separate configuration files. Uh, create test jail. Oops. Yeah. Yes. So behind the scenes, when I run this command, it just creates a bunch of folders. And if I go to my So you can see all the jails here. And for the test jail that I've just created, so I'm on the host system right now. This is its file system, but I'm looking from outside of the jail. So the host system has access to every resource of the jail. Um, so one point here, for file system, it's easy to avoid conflicts, but for network services, you got to be a bit careful because it's it, it software running on the host system has the visibility of um, the IP address of the jail, and you wouldn't want to bind to that specific IP address. Then things may get a little bit messy. So we are now outside of the jail, but if we want to get into the jail, Jail. What? Ah. I need to start it. So this is sort of in it. It's yeah. now start it. I'm in. Nothing was running. Um, uh, so this is how the. Um, what does the PS say at this point? Pardon? I can create as many days as I want. So if you look at the memory usage here, I have around six gigs of memory free, right? And if I test two. Test 
four. Okay, let's. Let's start them and see how much overhead it's. Um, so if you look at here, um, so the free memory is around 6.4 gigs. Um, the CPU is just very low. Test four. Test two. Now I have all the JS running. You see here. Uh, yeah, it's still almost the same. It's free. It's free. Is that why it's called free BSD? <laughs> uh, so th it's really resource efficient. Um, I use it on my AWS instance. So I have one, the free tier, you know, the tiny little. EC2 instance. Um, so you just run a main host machine. I can have it that way. Thank you. You run a host machine and um, a few jails in it, different web servers, maybe a, a simple database server, a simple one. Um, some other tasks, maybe, you um, schedule. And then uh, you set up a reverse proxy and do your little bit of firewall tweaks uh, just to do your application layer forwarding and um, there you go. Uh, the good thing is, as far as I know, it's secure. It's, uh, it's, it's not like there's a bug po popping up every day or every week. So it's uh, kind of um, solid and it's very uh, lightweight in terms of uh, the load it creates on the system. Uh, as I said, I use it on my laptop as my um, sort of web server to browse the code. Um, yeah. And this is a small cartoon for um, my esteemed Unix colleagues. Some say uh, Rob here is Rob Pike, you know, there. <laughs> um, because the tar command on uh, USBSD is not the same as uh, the Linux tar command, so you got different variations and they have different sort of semantics. Um, yeah, that's pretty much of it. Um, here are the um, references that I used. I really um, spent less than a day for this. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I, uh, but um, so, yeah, that's it. Uh, do you have any questions? Well, it, given that it uses <laughs> my own kernel, <laughs> that um, I've used it to um, do sort of basic development. So I um, so it's a good way to isolate what you have. Well, I think it's safe to use, but there is a but. <laughs> uh, th there is, um, so the, the downside is, because this is not 100% isolation like you would have with VMware or other sort of virtualization, so it still uses your kernel. Um, although many things are limited, like if you, within a jail, if you attempt to um, mount, maybe. No. What else could I do? You see, um, so we can't ping. So many things are um, disabled. Uh, so this 
pretty much secure, but when it comes to patching, like, you you wouldn't be able to replace the kernel anyway. So you can, I've done it, I've um, created a jail, patched uh, some soft third party software from the ports three, because I didn't want to mess my own system. That's okay, uh, but even if you try to build world, you won't be able to replace the kernel. Yeah. From some random project. Yeah. Any code that it finds there, pull it down and then execute it and test it. Yeah, that's pretty much yeah, that, yeah that, that, that's the pretty much the purpose of purpose of purpose of it because um, you can set limits on what a jail can or cannot do. Like the amount of memory it can use, the amount of CPU resource, amount of you know, read and writes. And uh, so you can set limits on those things. So this is pretty much the purpose of AJL. You, you, you can safely use it for this purpose. So you can put your PostgreSQL sort of development branch inside AJL, set up a cron job, let it download stuff, apply patch day and night, run it, and you can actually set up another cron job on your host system just to um, back up your whole jail in a tar archive so that when it becomes useless, you can dispose it and untar the latest useful version and um, keep using it. So th this is the pretty much cool um, feature so of it. Yeah, I think. Well, it still will use, uh, will put some burden on your system, like it will be building, but you'll set the limit of resource it can use. Yeah. Presumably, if, if, if that build needs to modify anything further up the tree that's outside the jail, we're unable to do so. Uh, yes, but the uh, file system hierarchy inside a jail. Uh, this is the same file system hierarchy um, as a fresh FreeBSD install. Um, we don't have this links, so you you have bin boot, not base jail bin boot. Uh, this is how easy jail sets the whole thing up. But um, with a jail, you would get the same file system hierarchy as a fresh FreeBSD install. So you can pretty much do anything that you can do with, um, you could do with a um, real system. The only limitation is you can't reboot the system, you can't change device drivers, you can't um, load kernel drivers and this sort of stuff, yeah, kernel modules, sorry. It's a, a really um, easy and, um, not dirty, clean way of uh, creating a container, putting stuff in, messing it around, delete, done. Um, th there is a sort of five to 10 minute uh, setup uh, on the host system, like you need to create some uh, extra network interfaces, like I've used, um, So I created a, another loopback device and um, bound all these IP addresses to this loopback device. And then I have to, PF is the um, firewall on FreeBSD systems. So I have to create a um, short firewall rule just to let these IP addresses go out. But if you have multiple IP addresses, like you have 10 IP public IP addresses, you can 
bind each jail to any of your IP addresses. No, you don't have to. And um, it's good though. You would, be, be, you, you yeah, you would like to update your um, because you update your system, base system, and the jails needs to be updated separately because they are separate systems. Although they use the same kernel, the uh, base system is different, so it needs to be updated. Even they similar. Um, similar. In the sense. Simlink. So it was similar to the Ah, base yeah, base. Simlink, yes. It was similar to the base jail, but not to actual, the actual base jail. Yeah, so if you have, for example, Nginx running in one jail, you have to update it separately because a uh, host system wouldn't update it when you so update, yeah. So the, the, the base jail, uh, I think that's called it, lives inside the jail. It's like this. Let me show you. So this is how EasyJail sets it up. Um, so EasyJail sets up a base jail and puts the common stuff in there. And it, when you create a jail, it just creates sim links to base jail just to save some disk space. Yeah. So in the host system, if you do a PS, can you see the processes being Yes, made? yeah. So the host system is still your um, HR, HR tandem, I would say. It's, I mean, if it is, um, if something happens like your host system panics, your jails will go down. So the um, anything running in the host system, any process will have visibility of jail processes. Yeah. Can you create jails from within the jail? <laughs> <laughs> I've never tried it. Um, so when I first started messing around with jails, I couldn't get my internet, I, I, I couldn't get out of the jail because apparently you have to create your name services file. I don't know why. It is not created automatically or it's not copied from your host, so you have to create it. So I um, created a forum thread on uh, official FreeBSD forum like, I can't get out of the jail. No, what was it? I can't get internet connection from inside it or something like that. And somebody was like, yes, this is the purpose, right? <laughs> you shouldn't be getting it from a prison. Um, so if you look at the code of the jail, the, the, the name of data structures and all the stuff is funny, like prison and you know the, this sort of stuff. Uh, yeah. Uh, have I mentioned it somewhere here? No. No, I must have took it out. Okay. Yeah, that's it. Um, FreeBSD jails. Do you have any questions? Any more? You see, we have. Pardon? Sorry? Um, <laughs> ah, yeah, uh, so the, the, the big users are Netflix, WhatsApp, I think Yahoo, you know? Do you know if they use jails as part of their infrastructure? I don't know. Yeah. I'm not quite sure. Because I'd be really interested in, in if there was some kind of orchestration Uh, there is zones. So, yeah, Solaris. Um, 
but as far as I, I don't know any big uses of jails. There must be some out there. <laughs> so the downside of FreeBSD, it again comes down to the license thing. Any big company can use it, and you don't know about it until somebody with at Microsoft.com sends an email to FreeBSD mailing list. Hey guys, how can I do this, like this and that? So there may be some big users out there, but I don't know. It, it has been around like 15, 18 years. Um, yeah. Yes. Upstream. It was FreeBSD. Yeah. <laughs> well, there are people out there like that. Anyway, thank you very much. Okay, thanks guys for listening. Um, yeah.